We're going to learn how to solve quadratic inequalities in one variable in this video. So here we have a quadratic. It's a quadratic because there's an x squared in it. It's an inequality because here we have a less than or equal to sign and there's only one variable in this inequality. The only variable here is x. So we're going to try to find out where the x squared minus 5x plus 4 is less than or equal to zero. Find all the x values that would make that true. Well, one of the ways we could do this is we could graph it. So I could get my graphing calculator out here and I could put in the equation x squared minus 5x plus 4 and graph the function here. And here we have this parabola, quadratics always end up looking like parabolas. So we have this parabola here and we want to find out where, what values of x give us a value that is less than or equal to zero. So if I'm looking at x values out here, it looks like all the answers are positive here. This is positive y values. But once I hit one and all the way up to the like, two, three, four, all of the answers here are negative. And once I get past 4, then the answers go positive again here. So looking from my graphing calculator, it appears like if the answers to this would be all of the x values that are less than or equal to 4 and greater than or equal to 1. Let's just get that back up again. So all of the x values in between 1 and 4, so all of these ones right hidden here, from 1 to 4 will give us negative y values. Once we get bigger than 4, our answers become positive. And once we get less than 1, again, the answers are, are positive. So that's one way that we can, we can do that, is to sketch the graph of the function and just see where, where does it go less than or equal to 0. And we found our answers there. Another way to do this is to do, do this algebraically. So if we took this function here, x squared minus 5x plus 4, and we made it equal to 0, Okay, then what we're going to do here is we're going to find the x values where all the x values where this thing is equal to 0. So let's do that. This is factoring a quadratic, so we need to find two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to minus 5. And I think we get minus 4 and negative 1, because negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, and negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. So, so factoring this would give us x minus 4 and x minus 1 equals 0, which means x equals 4 or x equals 1. So those are the places where this graph or this function equals 0. So in other words, if these are the places where it equals 0, then I'm going to plot this on a number line. So here's 1. I'm just going to put 1 on here and 4 on here. These are the places where it equals 0. So that means the numbers in this region are not 0, and the numbers in this region are not 0, and the numbers in this region of the number line are not 0. So all we need to do is we need to divide our number line up into three regions, region 1, region 2, and region 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply test a point from each of these regions and put it into our inequality, this is our inequality right here, and see if it's positive or negative, because we know these are the only places where it's zero. So either region 1 is going to be all positive or all negative, region 2 is either all positive or all negative, and the same thing with region 3. So in region number 1, let's see what our test point's going to be. Let's pick a number somewhere to the left of 1 on the number line. I'm going to try 0 because that's a nice number to put in. So when I substitute 0 into my inequality, I get 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 4. And when I do that, 0 squared is 0, minus 5 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 4 is 4. So these numbers in here are all going to be positive because 4 is a positive number. I'm going to test now a point in region 2 
something between 1 and 4, so I'm going to try 2. Now I'm going to put 2 into my equation. 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 4. So doing the test here, we get 4 minus 10 plus 4. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So these answers are coming out all negative. So region 2 must be a negative region. And then finally, we test a region somewhere to the right of 4. So I'm going to test the point 5, putting 5 into the equation. That would be 5 squared minus 5 times 5 plus 4. That's 25 minus 25 plus 4, which is 4, which is a positive number. So I know that region 3 is positive. So now, looking at my analysis of my different regions on my number line, I go back to my inequality and say, hey, I've got to find the regions where it's less than or equal to 0. In other words, I've got to find the negative regions. So it looks like my solutions would be region 2, those are the negative ones. And since it's equal to as well, whoops, I can, that means I can include these points here, the endpoints of the region, because these are the points where, remember, where it equaled 0. When x was 4 and x was 1 was where it equaled 0, so I can include them because we have the equal to part in the inequality. So my answers would be all of the x values that are less than or equal to 4, but greater than or equal to 1. So x is greater than or equal to 1, and x is less than or equal to 4. And that would be the solution to this quadratic inequality. All right, how about x squared plus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0? So we could get the calculator out, and we could draw the graph and see where it's greater than 0. But let's, let's do this algebraically. So I'm going to factor this again, and I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to find out where does it equal 0. So I need to find something that multiplies to minus 10 and adds to 3. Well, looks like 5 and minus 2 are going to work. 5 times minus 2 is minus 10, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So this would factor to x plus 5 and x minus 2. So this gives me x equals negative 5 or x equals positive 2. So now I put these two numbers on my number line. And I don't need any other numbers. I'm just, just trying to see what my regions are here. So I have negative 5 and I have positive 2, which gives me 1, 2, 3 regions. And let's start testing some points. So test points. I need some number less than minus 5. I'm going to go with minus 10. So I could take negative 10 and I could substitute it in here and see. Let's, so let's do this. So negative 10 squared plus 3 times minus 10 minus 10. And I just want to see what does this give me. So negative 10 squared is 100 minus 30 minus 10. 100 minus 30 is 70. 70 minus 10 is 60. So this is positive. But sometimes I've actually taking points and substituting the points into the original question and figuring out what the number is. If you go to your factored form here, so x plus 5 and x minus 2, and you take negative 10 and put it in here, you have negative 10 plus 5, which is something negative. So that first bracket would be a negative number, right? Because negative 10 plus 5 is negative. And here, negative 10 minus 2 is another negative number. It would be negative 12, but it would be oh, negative 1. A negative number. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So you don't, it doesn't matter even what the number ends up being when you work the whole thing out, you're, all you're concerned is, is the answer positive or is it negative? So instead of, what I mean, you can always just take the point and put it in here and work it out, but a quicker thing is actually to go to your factored form and just say that first bracket's going to be negative, that second bracket's going to be negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. 
let's see if that will, let's try that method with region 2 here. So we would test a point between negative 5 and 2. I like 0. So I'm going to put it in here. 0 plus 5 is a positive number. 0 minus 2 would be a negative number. And a positive times a negative is a negative. So you know this region is going to be negative. And then pick a number more than 2. Let's try 10. So first bracket, 10 plus 5 is positive number. 10 minus 2 is 8, that's positive number. Positive times a positive, positive. You know region 3 will be a positive number. Okay, so that's, that's a second way of doing it. So either take your test points and put them in your original um, inequality here and crunch the actual number out, which takes a little bit of work, or a quicker thing is actually to take your test point and put it in your factored part and just look at each factor and see if is the factor positive or negative and then a negative times a negative in our this case was a positive positive negative positive is what we found here okay so back to the original question we need to find the regions where it's greater than zero so that's region one and region three and greater than zero means we can't include these zeros here, the negative 5 and 2. So region 1 would be x values that are smaller than minus 5, and region 3 is the x values that are greater than 2. So these would be the x values. Any of these x values, when you substitute them in the original question, will give you answers that are greater than 0. Let's just quickly whip through this one. Um, it's kind of similar to the other ones, but you'll see there's one thing that's a little bit different to it. So two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to minus 8. Those numbers would be negative 4 and negative 4. So factoring this, we get x minus 4, x minus 4. Greater than 0. So we get x is 4 and x is 4, which is the same root. So there's really only one place here where this quadratic will equal 0, and that's at 4. So this is kind of nice because it means we only have two regions to test instead of the usual three. So region 1 and region 2. So I'm going to test a point that is less than 4. I can use my 0 here. So in my first bracket, I'm going to get a negative. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So 0 minus 4 in the second bracket is also a negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So this is a positive region. Region 2, something more than 4. Let's try 10. First bracket, 10 minus 4 is positive something. Here, 10 minus 4 will be a positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. So this region 2 is also positive. And so the question is, where is this where is this quadratic greater than 0? So that would be region 1 and region 2, but not 4, So because it was greater than 0. So I can't include the 4. So really, I have all the x values less than 4 and all the x values that are greater than 4. So these would be the solutions here. Instead of writing this, Instead of saying all the numbers less than 4 and all the numbers greater than 4, another way of writing this is we could say x is any real number. So x is an element of the real number set. x can be anything, comma, but x cannot be 4. So it's just writing it the other way around. Instead of saying these are the values that x can be, we'll say x can be anything except negative 4. So either, either way here is, is fine. Two x squared plus fifteen x is greater than or equal to eight. Well, the first thing we need to do here is we need to make sure our quadratic is greater than or equal to zero. So we must make sure that the right side is zero. So we're going to minus eight from both sides here. So just one extra little step here. To set our inequality greater than or equal, now in this case greater than or equal to zero. Now, when you're at this stage right here, we want to find out where does our quadratic equal 0. 
And this one has the coefficient in front of x squared. So either we got to factor this, which we can do, or remember we can use the quadratic formula, which is this formula right here. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use the quadratic formula here. So negative b, b is 15, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So either you, you factor this quadratic with the coefficient of 2 or you can use the quadratic formula. So I'm just going to figure out what this part in the middle here is. So 15 squared a minus minus will make a plus here, so plus 4 times 2 times 8. So this is 289 all over 4. Now with a little bit of luck, 289 will be a rational number when we square root it, so 17. So the square root of 289 was 17. So here I get negative 15 plus 17, which is 2. 2 fourths is 1 half. Or negative 15 minus 17 is negative 32. And negative 32, well, let's, let's not make a mistake here. Um, so negative 8. So these are my two roots. So that was... That was just a little more work to get it to find those places where it equals zero when there was a number in front of x squared and we couldn't factor it easily. But now that I have my roots, one half and negative eight, the process here is exactly the same. So now we have our, our three regions. We need to pick three test points. So something to the left of minus eight I'm going to try minus 10. Now in this situation you might just want to go and substitute the number into here because we don't have a factor. But once you have your roots, if one half is your root then you could say the factor would be x minus a half and if negative 8 is your root then you could say that the factor would be x plus 8. We just need to have the opposite signs here because negative 8 would be the root here, negative 8 plus 8 is 0, and 1 half minus 1 half is 0. So either when you have your test point, put it into the original qu question, or when you have your roots, your factors will be x minus whatever those roots are. So x minus a half and x minus minus 8 or x plus 8. So I'm going to do I'm going to do it this way now that I have the factors. So negative 10 minus a half, this would be a negative, the first bracket. Negative 10 plus 8 is also a negative and a negative times a negative is a positive. And region 2, great, I can try 0. 0 minus a half is a negative. 0 plus 8 is a positive, and negative times a positive is a negative. And over here I can test, say, 2. 2 minus a half is a positive. 2 plus 8 is a positive. A positive times a positive is a positive. And now to solve this inequality, I want to know where is it greater than or equal to zero. So those are my positive regions. So I would say x is less than or equal to minus 8, because notice we had the equal to sign, so we can include the zeros. Or x is greater than or equal to 1 half, region 3. So that's how we would solve quadratic inequalities in one variable.